You're driving across a bridge, maybe on your way home from work. It's not ancient built, just a few decades ago, but something about it feels. Tired, you see rust stains leaking through the concrete like old wounds. Chunks are missing from the edges. Fine cracks stretch out like spider webs. And for a moment, a strange thought crosses your mind, is this even safe? Now, picture another structure half a world away and nearly 2,000 years older. A dome in Rome called the Pantheon. It has no steel inside it. No rebar. Just pure, unreinforced concrete. It has survived earthquakes, floods, wars, and the slow decay of centuries. And somehow, it's still standing perfectly. The Romans built it before electricity, before modern chemistry and it remains the world's largest unreinforced concrete dome. So how is it that a monument from the ancient world can outlast the bridges and skyscrapers of our own? What did the Romans know about building that we seem to have forgotten? The answer lies in something we take for granted, concrete. We live surrounded by it. It's in our homes, our roads, our cities. It's the second most used substance on earth after water. But here's the uncomfortable truth. Our modern version of it is fundamentally flawed. We've been building our world on a material that's destined to fail. Modern concrete is strong when you press down on it. That's called compressive strength. It's great for holding up weight, but when you pull or bend it, it's fragile. It cracks. That's where steel came in. Engineers in the 19th century thought they had found the perfect fix, reinforced concrete. You take weak concrete, bury steel bars inside, and together they handle both pressure and tension. For a while, it seemed genius. But hidden inside that brilliant idea was a slow, unstoppable self-destruct button. See, concrete isn't solid the way it looks. It's actually full of tiny pores, like a stone sponge. Water seeps in, oxygen sneaks through, and with time, they find their way to the steel buried within. The moment that happens, the countdown begins. The steel starts to rust. And here's the terrifying part when steel rusts. It doesn't just crumble quietly, it expands. A lot. That rust can take up to 10 times more space than the original metal. Imagine thousands of steel bars deep inside a bridge, each one swelling with enormous force, pressing outward. The pressure reaches levels concrete simply can't resist. It starts cracking from within. Tiny fissures become fractures. Chunks begin to fall away. The moment you see rust stains on a bridge, the battle is already being lost. This process has a name spalling and once it starts, it's unstoppable. The cracks let in more air and water, which means faster rusting, which means more cracks. A perfect feedback loop of decay. And here, s the cruel irony. The steel we added to make concrete stronger is the very thing that ensures it will die. If you've ever walked under a crumbling overpass or seen the exposed ribs of rebar jutting out from an old wall, you've witnessed that self-destruction in action. Every year, billions are spent patching, repairing, and rebuilding concrete that was supposed to last a lifetime. But maybe it's not just bad maintenance, maybe it's bad design, because the Romans didn't have this problem. Which brings us back to them. What exactly did they do differently? To understand that, you have to go back not just in time, but into the chemistry of the material itself. Roman concrete, known as opus commentaceum, wasn't just a mix of stone, water, and lime. It was alive. It evolved. It adapted. In some strange way, it healed itself. If you visit the ancient ruins along the Italian coast, you'll see walls of concrete still holding firm against the sea. Salt water, crashing waves, centuries of erosion, and yet, those blocks remain. Modern concrete in that environment lasts maybe 30 years before it crumbles. Roman concrete, 2000 and counting. For a long time, scientists thought it was just because the Romans used a special volcanic ash called Pozzolana. They knew it gave their concrete strength and water resistance, but that couldn't be the full story. There was something else going on. 
something almost magical. When researchers took samples of Roman concrete under a microscope, they noticed small, bright white fragments scattered throughout the material. For decades, people assumed these were just impurities sloppy mistakes in the mixing process. But a team at MIT started asking a brilliant question. If the Romans were such master engineers, why would their mistakes be so consistent? Maybe they weren't mistakes at all. The team decided to dig deeper, and what they found changed everything. Those white fragments weren't flaws. They were pockets of quicklime lime that was still chemically alive. And how they got there reveals the true genius of Roman engineering. Unlike our modern process, which carefully hydrates lime before mixing, the Romans used something called hot mixing. They added quicklime directly into the mixture dry. When water hit it, the reaction produced intense heat, creating new chemical compounds that made the entire structure more stable. And it left behind those tiny pockets of raw, reactive lime. At first, that might not sound like much. But those little pockets gave Roman concrete something extraordinary. The ability to heal itself. This is where the real secret begins. When cracks form in modern concrete, it's the beginning of the end. But when cracks form in Roman concrete, it's just the beginning of a repair. Water seeps in, dissolves a bit of that leftover quicklime, and creates a calcium-rich solution that flows into the crack. There, it recrystallizes, forming new minerals that bond the fracture shut. The concrete literally repairs itself from the inside out. It doesn't just seal the damage, rebuilds its strength. Imagine a bridge that could heal its own cracks. A seawall that becomes stronger the longer it faces the waves. The Romans didn't imagine it, they built it. And here's where it gets even stranger, the sea didn't destroy their concrete, it helped it. The salt water reacted with the volcanic ash and lime, forming a rare mineral called tobamorite, which continued to grow and strengthen the concrete over centuries. In other words, the Romans built a material that got tougher with time. The more nature attacked it, the more it reinforced itself. Centuries passed, and yet, the Pantheon still stood. Empires fell, languages died, and religions changed. But that dome, that impossible circle of stone, remained untouched by time. When Renaissance artists like Michelangelo first saw it, he was stunned. He said it looked more like the work of angels, not men. For hundreds of years, Europe tried to recreate it. Architects could copy its shape, but not its soul. The secret ingredient was gone. Today, researchers at MIT and other universities are trying to bring this lost technology back. They've managed to replicate parts of the formula, and the results are astonishing. Buildings made with this modern Roman-style concrete could heal cracks within weeks, creating structures that last for centuries instead of decades. In a way, we re-rediscovering what the ancients already knew. That time, ISNT, the enemy of good design. Neglect is? The Pantheon still watches over Rome like an immortal witness to human ingenuity. It's Oculus, that famous round opening in the domelets, in a single beam of light each day moving across the marble floor like a celestial clock. A reminder of our endless pursuit of perfection. And maybe that's what makes Roman architecture so haunting. It reminds us that progress doesn't always move forward. Sometimes it circles back. We look at the ruins and realize the ancients were not primitive. They were pioneers. Their legacy wasn't just carved in stone, was encoded in science. And every time a new crack forms in our modern world, their voice echoes through the centuries, whispering that maybe we still have more to learn from the past than we think. So, what do you think? Were the Romans simply master builders, or were they uncovering knowledge far beyond their time? Share your thoughts in the comment side. Love to know what you believe. And if you enjoy uncovering the forgotten genius of ancient civilizations, make sure to subscribe. Because here, every ruin has a story on. Every story brings the past back to life. Thanks for watching.